the world will never understand what it's like to put fresh new batteries into, into the into the podcasting equipment. They'll never know because we started this for like two seconds and then it died. Literally about two seconds. Get your headphones figured out. Yes, I did. Because it's been so long. Because the world sucks because COVID sucks and everything sucks. <laughs> yep. But we did actually get to travel recently, so that's always nice. So it was very nice. So, anyways, welcome to uh, Taste Like Homebrew Podcast. I am apologizing for. Not cracking this beer open soon enough. And you can't hear me crack my beer open because it came from the keg in our garage. What's the keg of? Lumberbeard. Do you remember the name of it? No. Uh, neither do I. I don't think I ever knew the name of it, actually. Uh, it's one of their IPAs. And take a sip. See if you like it. <clears throat> while I am, uh, while she's taking a sip, I'm drinking a Weldworks Extra Extra Juicy Bits. A double IPA that's double dry hopped and double wet. No, it's actually not wet. But we will talk about Fresh Hops for a second today because we haven't talked about it and it season's well over now because mm-hmm. it's 2022. But, and you know what, let's just talk about it. First, how was your beer? Uh, my beer is good. I like it. It's very light, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's, it's very, very light. light. It's very, very light. <clears throat> so it's good. It's a good IPA. So can you guess at least, because I, I, I counted, but um, some uh, some beers are not named Fresh Hops. So this is how many beers I had that had the word fresh, wet, some variation of how many fresh hops do you think I had in 2021? Um, well, I know that it's over 45 because that's where I stopped listening to you when you were counting them. So I'm going to go for 115. Oh, I am higher than that. Okay, 140. I, okay, so I like to call myself the king of fresh hops because my goal this year was to be the most. And I originally, my goal was 200. It came woefully short. Okay. But I feel like at 151, oh, that should put me in the top, we'll say 100 fresh hop drinkers in the world. I'm just I'm bragging right now that I am top 100 in the world. I feel like that's a challenge. Can, can I mean? There's a lot. I mean, I'm sure someone maybe at Single Hill, someone at Wandering Hop, mm-hmm. one Bale Breaker, one of those breweries out there. Maybe there's someone who had more. But the amount of traveling we did for like I, we went around the Northwest trying to get our hands on freshies. Uh, we went to a whole festival about we, it. We went to three whole festivals about it. Oh, that's true. We did go to three whole festivals about it. We I forgot to, about the other two. <laughs> yeah, we went to the one in Magnuson, and we went to the one in... Where was the other one? Where was the other one? Oh, um, <laughs> it, was it was in Seattle. Yeah. In uh, um, that park. Yeah. Magnuson. Well, you said Magnuson, and what was the other one? Um, uh, Marymore. Was it in Marymore? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was on the other little side of it. Yeah. yeah, wasn't that the one? Because it's been so long, I don't remember. But yes, it wasn't Mary. So when I was thinking of Marymore, I was thinking where the Washington Brewers Festival is. This yeah. was like on the other side towards the dope ass rock climbing wall. It was, yeah. And um, so we went to that one, and then the next day we went to the one in Magnuson. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and since then we've also been to a winter beer festival, also at Magnuson. Mm-hmm. I think Magnuson is a wonderful spot for brewers festivals. It is impossible to get to from the south end. Yes. Yeah. We're coming from Renton. If you're coming from like the North End, Bothell, North Seattle, anywhere like a like U District higher, super easy to get. Yeah. No, there's a dog right there. You're pointing at it. Well, no, he's trying to get your attention. Okay. Hi, Sorry, you don't have to get paying him attention. I was trying to are distract we not, him. Are we not podcasting? Well, I mean, yeah. I feel like we have to take a break and talk about the dog in yeah, every podcast. Course. So uh, we went to those three festivals. We went to a winter beer festival, which was awesome. Um, but with, when it comes to freshies, I feel like I'm, uh, I'm, I'm leader in the clubhouse Okay. to use a golf term. I mean, I think that I, I think you way, you know, way, way surpassed me on, uh, my fresh hop. Well, at, at one year. point you definitely got fresh hopped out and I know a I lot did. of people. Yeah, I really did. It's a bear. Did you drink that many fresh hops? Because about, about number 75, you're like, I just want to just. I want a seltzer. I yeah. want something different. I just want a Sprite. I, I, want... I don't want this consistency in my mouth or it, my tummy anymore. Because it's, like... it's, very, it's very dank. Yeah. It's very, very hop forward. you got to love the smell of hops. And you got to love the flavor of hops. And you got to love the aroma of hops. And Which the I do, hops but I, like, I feel hops. like I got there was a couple times um, with the fresh hop season where I just kind of hit my limit where I was like, okay, enough. Like, <laughs> en- enough beer for now. So... Yeah, so you know what? It's 
I appreciate Fresh Hop Season. In the past, we've dedicated entire episodes to Fresh Hop Season. Mm -hmm. No need to do that. I, it would just be kind of repeating the same stuff over and over that we talked about Fresh Hop. So like, but real quick before we move on from Fresh Hop, of the festival, was there anything that stood out to you? Oh. Clobbers. Okay. I would I would agree. I would yeah, say the Clobbers they're, they're, they're stood like out to me. They're green series or whatever they want it to be, like where everything has the word green in it. Mm -hmm. All of them kicked ass. Uh, Ravenna, as always, has some really good ones. Uh, Single the Hill. Sabro Fresh Hop that the Ravenna took to the... That might have um, been the best one. ...to the Magnuson Fresh Hop Festival was one of my favorite beers i It was I've like a coconut year. bomb. It was so good. It like literally was just like, it was like drinking a coconut. It was so good. Like It was just like pina colada in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Pina colada pineapple and coconut? I don't actually know. Uh, yeah, like some... Pineapple, yeah. coconut. It it's delicious. like pineapple and coconut. Yeah, it's really good. So, um, yeah, <laughs> that was... Fresh Hop Season was an overall success. Um, you know, if you find yourself with a Fresh Hop beer now, mm -hmm. drink it ASAP because those things are not meant to last. Yeah, it's kind of... It's kind of done. It's kind of the end of the uh, <laughs> end of the barrel. Unless so you're speak. Sierra Nevada and you just released your Fresh Hop celebration that people on Twitter lose their shit about. Is that really Fresh Hop? No, though? no, because it's not, is they it? say it is. They, they, whoever writes their marketing or whoever does their like, like their their copy editors or whomever it is, they make it pretend like that is Fresh Hop. But then someone like I was making fun of it. Someone's like, yeah, it's not Fresh Hop. It's freshly kilned. Like, they bring it fresh up and they kill it right away. So, therefore, they call it a fresh. It is absolutely not fresh. And it's a it's a darker beer. It's a more it's a more a fuller body. And so, it's, you don't get that real dankiness of the hops on it. You just get a IPA. That's It's fine. You can mm -hmm. buy it at Costco. So, it can't be the most amazing thing in the world. But people like it. And, you know, if you like it, then drink it. I'm not, yeah. I'm not here to make fun of you. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I would agree with that. There's, you know, who cares if you like whatever you like, just, you know, drink that. But, um, yeah, it, I don't think it's really a fresh hop. But anyway, <laughs> sorry. You're just being snobby because you're from the Pacific, Pacific Northwest. And we have the home of the hops, the best beer in the world up here, in my opinion. Other cities have beer. We have the best beer. Uh, what did you think of the Fresh Hop Festival in general? The one in Yakima? Mm -hmm. A delightful shit show. Okay, yeah. Um, what did you think was delightful, and what did you think was a shit show? Uh, the shit showness was transportation. I would that agree. That is a shit show. Getting mm -hmm. there was okay if you got there early. I mean, it was, in the years past, it's always been in downtown Yakima, but this year is in the middle of nowhere, Yakima. So it's like you had to take a bus to get there because they didn't allow people to like stay there overnight, like camp or or you know whatever. And so we had to stay. We stayed at our little spot in downtown Yakima. We took like this little bus that seats eight, mm -hmm. not convenient. And then you, it's, you get there, and you're having that's awesome when you get there. Yeah, but it's all outside, and the you know the food and food was the food was awesome. We were in VIP. Uh, thank you, Marley from Brewmaster's Tap Room, for getting us VIP in there. And so the food was catered. Um, you know, the, almost like all the beer we could drink. Like even though it is on a was it a ticket system. Yeah, I was like those little tokens. Yeah, it was tokens. Yeah, or the they were like they look like little bread holders. But thingies. I never seem to run out of them. No, I don't, I mean, I, no, I don't think I ran out. I actually think we have like a handful of them sitting on top of our washing machine right now in our garage. Um, I would agree. I think that like I think the location itself wasn't so bad. Like being out in the open and an open field, very big, very yeah. open. You know, during COVID, that's what I thought happen. was odd was that the all of the breweries were lined up against one wall. Was, you, so they had this huge amount of open space, and all the breweries in like one tiny little cluster. But it wasn't a cluster. It was long as shit, though. Yeah, like, <laughs> but it was just like the one one arm of the field. This might be a, a vague reference, but if, as kids, we used to play this thing called butt ball. Where it was kind of like you, you take a tennis ball and you have to hit it against the wall. And if it bounced twice, so you hit off the wall, then it bounced twice. You had to go against the wall. Then everybody could take the tennis ball and throw it at you while you had your back turned. I'm, I don't know where you're going with this, but okay. But when you would have so many people, because eventually we would like to make it quicker, we would line up a whole bunch of people against the wall. So you had this big long line of kids and you just chuck balls at them. Your recess teachers let you do this? No, nowadays, like one kid would get concussed and someone would get sued. And okay. Then but this is, you know, I'm a true, like, you know, this is the 80s no, and the 90s. No, but your recess teachers let you do that in, like, the 90s. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. They, okay. They That's what I meant. They didn't yeah. give a shit. Nowadays, 
because there was a time where I had to be a recess teacher when I started on my educational like career, and if we saw this, I'd be like, oh my goodness, no. So anyway, butt ball, everyone's lined up and but that's against the, one wall. That remind me because you just have a real long line of just like we can we can a whole bunch can, of people, just a whole bunch of people in just one long line, and you have all this space, but everybody's condensed in just one single file line. Almost seems like, and mm-hmm. it was very very odd. Like make a square, make like the Washington Brewers Festival where you have little pods. Yeah, that's yeah. I thought that was a little bit odd. Um, I also thought it was um, the transportation was just not terrible. They did not that out. did not work well because no kind u- of there's no Uber system out there. There's no they like, well taxis. they sh- they shuttle you out there and then you wait and you check in and you go into the festival and that's all good and normal and stuff. But then you're then you're there. Yeah, and you're pretty much stranded until like the festival's over the festival's over so if you want to leave early you can't mm-hmm. um which just seems like a terrible situation and there's no you can't walk anywhere and the bus system like their their buses they're dropping off people at random hotels but there's only one bus bus per thing so it take you know it's like a 20 minute round trip mm-hmm. and these buses would fill up really quick well they, it was like t- eight you said eight to, it was like yeah, the, the small buses were like eight. But they had also some charter buses too. Oh, they did. Okay, but, was, but we took one those. charter bus because it's the only bus there, and we're like, all right, we got on. Then it took us to another hotel that was like two miles away from downtown Yakima. Where we we're staying, so it's like, well, we can either walk for forty minutes, and we're you know, we just left a beer festival, so we're inebriated yeah. as hell. Uh, eventually, we found like the one taxi cab, and we filtered in like thirteen people into it. But yeah, so yeah, they'll figure that out. Um, I this the setup was fun. Yeah, and they're, I mean the beer was good. Like yeah, good meal. They had free, uh, free Washington French fries. Those all, were good. I the, would say the, from the Washington Potato Society. I don't know what that name those is. Those were like fancy McDonald's French fries. Yeah, they're yeah because McDonald's has like the best French fries for fast food, and the McDonald's ones were or the uh, the Washington ones were fantastic. So, anyways, that was Fresh Hops. The um, the one in Mary Moore was fine. It was tiny. The one in uh, Magnuson was fine. It was tiny. I liked the one in Magnuson. I thought that one was pretty good. I know that we there wasn't like a ton of breweries there, but um, I thought that one was just fun. Just because Ravenna was there and they just kill it. Yeah, yeah. But it, I thought it, w- I mean, it was enjoyable. And when we were done, we were able to like leave, mm. which was nice. Yeah. All right. So then after Fresh Hop, what happened? Like the next day? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I probably took a nap. Mm, that after, about right. after fresh hops naps are absolutely needed should we uh should we no but you, like what what was the next big beer thing after that was uh the winter beer festival probably the winter beer festival a couple weeks ago yeah which was a lot of fun and i mean it is there's nothing that orgasms christmas more in my mind than the winter beer festival like everybody except for me gets really on board and everybody kind of has the christmas spirit minus me you know and um, everybody has a really good time, especially if you like dark beers. If you don't like dark beers, the Winter Beer Festival is probably not your jam. Um, or not your number one jam, but they do have a good selection of IPAs. We went with a friend who's not a big um, dark beer fan, mm-hmm. and she was able to find um, lots of beers that she would More or less, people drink. brought one IPA or one lager or one something. Most of the time, yeah. Unless you're Fremont and you just brought all the good stuff and then sold out. Womp womp. I know. I'm so glad we went Friday. Yeah, so we went to Friday, and I suppose the Saturday night, Saturday night um, whatever session, mm-hmm. a lot of the uh, breweries sold out of their beer. So all the good ones we got to have on Friday were not there on Saturday evening. Womp womp. Sucks for them. But it's all right, because we got to drink ours, and, you know, I just want to have my cake and then eat it, too. Is that how that saying works? Kind of. Close enough. <laughs> all right so should we catch up to modern times though or or not like the brewery modern times but like okay i was like what did we do at modern times nothing we uh well we were down in portland recently for a night we were so um we uh both had the week between christmas and new year's off so uh decided to head down to portland for a night and then jutted over to hood river for two nights so um, got to hit a bunch of spots along the way. Hit a couple favorites up, like Trap Door down in um, down in Vancouver. Actually, on the way mm-hmm. down through Olympia, we stopped at uh, Well, well 80, Eighty, which if you have been to Well Eighty, I recommend it. The burgers there are fantastic. They were good. I was <laughs> I was very impressed. That was the first time I've had burgers there, and they were very good. And if you miss Olympia beer, 
like the old school Olympia beer when they when Paps a bunch of jerk asses decided to stop selling PBR or starts to stop selling um Olympia Olympia beer uh Olympia well 80 makes Olympia they have like the original 1964 recipe mm-hmm. and they I guess supposedly they get the old Olympia brewer they fly him out from Milwaukee or wherever they live now and they brew some batches Oh, they fly him out? I didn't know that. Yeah, he, come, come, bre- he comes brews with them. I, at least that's what they told me when I was there not too, too long ago. So, And you get free popcorn, too. Oh, yeah. The popcorn is good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like a chili lime popcorn. Yeah, or it's super tasty. Um, so we went to uh, Well 80, then we went down to Trapdoor. Trapdoor is always great. Mm-hmm. Um, for those who are curious, they're uh, dog-friendly on the outside only, but the outside has a mostly heated tent. Yeah. I mean, it took the edge off. Yeah. It was still cold out there, but it was, it, it, was it was better than if it was not enclosed at all. Yep. Then we uh, wandered down to Portland. We hit up a new brewery, our new, mm-hmm. uh, not necessarily new. They opened a new location called Brewery Twenty Six. Mm-hmm. Um, so they have a new location there. Um, we stopped and had dinner at Ex Novo. We had some excellent tiny pizzas. Mm, the best little uh, Detroit style pizzas. Mm-hmm. Just, I bought a sweatshirt. Just a fan, a tie dye sweatshirt. I did, yeah. Then we stopped by. Where do we else do we go to that night? Uh, um, mountain on the fire on the mountain, fire on the side of the mountain, yeah, fire on the mountain, something like that. Which is mostly a wing place. Yeah, but those wings are so good. So when we got there, they're like, "Hey, to go only." It's like, "Well, can we order some to go wings and have a beer here while we wait?" And they're like, "Sure." So we got the wings to go, took it back to the hotel room, and just enjoyed the shit out of those. Mm-hmm. I think that's all we went to over there in Portland. Yeah, I mean, by that point, it was, uh, it was getting late. It, it was, was getting snowing. late, and it was snowing, and like I think both of us were tired. Um, the drive from where we live down into Portland is not necessarily all that far, but it was um, December 27th, so it was the day that there was still like a ton of snow and ice on the ground, so... Uh, we had a little bit of a slow go getting out of our area. It took area. us about two hours to get from Seattle to Olympia. Yeah. Very, a very slow two hours that required us stopping for windshield wiper fluid. Somebody doesn't keep her windshield wiper fluid full. I figured that they would top that off when I got my car serviced like a week ago. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, so the next day we ventured out to Hood River, but we stopped at um, Thunder Island. Yes. Had a drink there, had a couple appetizers. Then we crossed over onto the Washington side, mm-hmm. then went to, um, we didn't go to Walking Man because that wasn't open. We went to Backwoods, which is just a fantastic location in Carson. Yeah, that mac and cheese, the uh, pulled pork mac and cheese that they had there was so good. Yeah. Like, so, so good. So I'd recommend doing that. And the beer is good there, too. I had a, a white stout, like a, it was like a cinnamon white stout. That was very, very tasty. And then we wandered over to everybody over in white salmon which is across the river from hood river um my first time ever and actually on that washington side before so i've never been to stevenson i've never been to carson and i've never been to white salmon before Mm -hmm. uh cute little towns stevenson and white salmon more adorable than carson but Mm -hmm. it was it was enjoyable i liked the stop i thought it was definitely a cool stop yeah i wish we could have spent more time at the breweries but the fact that we were driving and you know we had it was and again it was still snowing yeah um, in White Sam, you have to climb a big ass hill to get to the breweries or the brewery up there. But adorable little town. Highly recommend stopping on the Washington side. Mm-hmm. Highway 14 is a pretty drive. You know, and and I thought some of those towns along the way were actually really cute. Like, um, you can kind of go back and forth over the bridge and uh, and kind of hit hit something on the Oregon side, and then hit something on the Washington side, and then hit something on the Oregon side. Like the bridges are two dollars though for those who need to remember to bring two dollars with you. Yeah, true. But it was still fun. I thought I really enjoyed that leg of the trip of where we were um, kind of making our way from Portland over to Hood River. And then we finally made our way to Hood River. Yay. First, so we had stopped at Hood River years ago for lunch at Frem. Mm -hmm. Frem? Frem. Frem. I think it's Frem. 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 I like calling it Frem because it's a little more Fremish. Well, I think I called it Frem for years, and I think I've just recently been trying to correct myself and call it Frem. So Frem. So we stopped there years ago, had... um, had their lunch there. It was very tasty, but we didn't spend any time in Hood River. In mm-hmm. fact, we kind of stayed on that that uh, water side, so the kind of industrial side. Um, so we never really got to see downtown Hood River. So what are your impressions of Hood River, the town itself? Uh, well, like ye old Hood River, yeah. where we were staying. Yeah, yeah, the the, the main Hood River. Um, it reminds me of a teeny tiny um, Astoria. 
it's kind of like um it's smaller but it's got like kind of everything you need it's got like a little bookstore it's got a couple little wineries um it's got um you know restaurants and uh bars uh and yeah it was just a cool town i liked it i thought it was kind of like quaint and unique and um, when we were staying there, one of the mornings we woke up, it was like lightly snowing and it was, it was adorable, like, but, um, it definitely has an Astoria feel. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. It was a fun place to spend like two nights, I think. So if you had pound for pound, what do you like more, Astoria or Hood River? It's going to be, okay. This it's, I guess it's a dumb question because you're completely biased towards Astoria. Yeah. Because you got, you know, married, married there. there. Yeah. <laughs> But I, there is a definite feel, kind of the same kind of architecture. Yes, Story. all very kind of like um, that Victorian. I think the downtown Astoria area is a little bit bigger. I like think quite, so too. Quite a bit bigger. I think there's a little bit more to do in Astoria. But I, without looking at populations, it wouldn't surprise me if Hood River's bigger, just because we drove up the hill on Hood River, mm-hmm. and there's quite a bit back there. Kind of the town kind of just keeps reaching back towards like Mount Hood. Is there like an actual town of Hood River behind that like cute little quaint? area well yeah so we like the st- actual city of hood river i mean you when we stopped by a place called atomic bottle shop mm-hmm. and that's kind of like the i think it's called hillside or hilltop or something like that and that's just another area of town um if you go to a store if you go up the hill it just kind of becomes nothing but if you go up hood river there's a bunch of there's things more, up there yeah like cool little bottle shop didn't have a lot for beers on tap but it had some quality beer and bottles Mm-hmm. I was able to grab a four pack from Bow and Arrow, which is a brewery out of uh, Albuquerque. I've never had their beer, but I know they're very, very good. And Have you be- tried one of them yet? Yes, and it's super delicious. Oh, good. Okay. It's called something West, Scenic West, I think. And it's delicious. It is a very good beer. So, yeah, that's but like beer wise, Hood River, what really stood out for you? Um, I about, mean, it, well, the it, thing about the dinner we had. The oh steak dinner? No. The, the, were you there in Hood River? <laughs> yeah. You, Are you talking about Double Mountain? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. At the brewery we were yeah. at? Okay. I don't know. Sorry. We had two dinners there. <laughs> the, yeah. So we went to a very average steakhouse there. And somehow <laughs> that stood out more in Sam's mind than the delicious pizza that we had at Double Mountain. Sorry. <laughs> um, Beer-wise, probably... Probably Double Mountain. Obviously, Freem is like gonna stand out. So Double Mountain, the, they're like when we were told to go to Hood River, they're like, you gotta go to Double Mountain. You gotta get the pizzas. The pizzas are straight up legit. I love that pizza. It was so good. It was like kind of that. Uh, it was like that thin style. You know, they had to get good on toppings. I think we had mm-hmm. like pepperoni with Little Mama's peppers and mm-hmm. something else on it. The beer itself, I had a good barrel-aged beer. I mean, you can get Double Mountain beers a lot of places. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, the beer itself is whatever, but the pizza itself was awesome. Good little spot. Um, definitely because it was kind of the heart of the town, uh, downtown area. You know, we could walk there from the Hood River Hotel where we stayed, which is a straight-up cool hotel. Yeah, that was a cool hotel. I wish you would have got breakfast there because the breakfast there was so good. Yeah, I know, I know. But, I like, I got up that morning and I just kind of wanted to, like... Get ready, and it was sleep ver- some more. Well, and it was very snowy, like yeah. So yeah, <laughs> but um, um, so we stopped by Frame also, which was really good. Uh, ferment, where Sam got to drink in a uh, yurt, a mini yurt, a it, mini cold yurt. Yes, it was a mini cold yurt. Um, it, they just had these little tiny like yurts. I mean, set up that would just uh, house maybe like four or five people if you wanted them to um to just sit around and drink beer and and with a little heater in it it was pretty cool so fram and ferment are right next to each other too which is nice so you can walk between the two there's like a little coffee shop in between also Mm -hmm. um so if you want to kind of get that area and i've been told by multiple people that that area is open container too but the fact that it was like 20 degrees negated that whole concept of open container it was also lunchtime when we went there so i think we were there at like Oh, yeah, we got like, there at like eleven o'clock in the morning, like or on a le- Tuesday, yeah, or on like a Tuesday. So we didn't see a lot of other people walking around with beer, so we weren't really like. And it was also eleven o'clock in the morning we on all, a Tuesday, so I think we were fine. We also one hundred percent drove from Frame to yeah, Ferment, yeah, true, because it was so cold. True. So, but anyways, the the beer itself, I know you can finally start to find Ferment in cans around here. 
Um, it's enjoyable. I had a, like a CDA from them. Mm-hmm. I think you had their IPA. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Freem had a freaking triple hazy on. Yeah, that was good. We so split that. For a brewery that's like traditional kind of German styles in Freem, they're definitely venturing out to do new things. And they're they're knocking it out of the park. Are they considered a German style brewery? I think I think traditionally they are. They like they're OG. Like they do a, still a lot of traditional. Like I had a North German lager. Okay. Uh, because uh, and I, I think it was by the last podcast when we had four generals on here for a minute. Ross, he was talking about um, Chuck Nut and Freem being kind of the top of the line German breweries. Okay. So. I guess I've never considered them to be a German brewery. I've always kind of considered them to be more. Um, They're very traditional in the way they do a lot yeah, of things. Yeah, traditional in general. Um, I guess that makes sense that they would be. I mean, think about some of their, German, their beers that they bottle. They build other pilsners. They bottle all of their lighter, lo- like their beers. But they also do a lot of like barrel aged, mm-hmm. like kind of well. Saisons. Just think about their naming techniques. They're just IPA <laughs> and double IPA. <laughs> True and single hazy IPA. IPA. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You know, mo- now breweries nowadays are like, hmm, I'm going to have an IPA and I'm going to call it uh, Yogurt Diarrhea. That would sell. Yeah. Uh, raisin Farts. Oh. My dog is just like jumping on me while I'm talking about Raisin Farts. No, I was awing the Raisin Farts, actually. Not the dog. <gasps> Aw. For a change. Yeah, oh, good. Now, now I'm awing So the if dog, anybody wants the beer name Raisin Farts, uh, you don't have to credit me. You just have to know that I am inside your heart and I regret nothing. Brewery, uh, so uh, and then tap room. So we never made it to full sale, and no. Um, but I don't need to go to full sale. You can have full sale in any grocery store you want. Um, also, they weren't open at all. They're open right when we were leaving, and we didn't really want to stop on the way out. No. <laughs> so uh, the last thing was there it was called uh, a tap room called Sixty Four Ounces Tap Room. That place is cool. Went there. I went there like four times. Well, you went there when I went. I went across the street to go to a winery, and then you went there for that. I went there when you went to a bookstore. When you went to a winery, I went there again that night, and then the next day I went there again, and then the time after. Okay, so you went there five times. Yeah, because when you went to bed at like nine, it stayed open a little bit later. So I took the dog. We walked in the snow and went down there and had a pint. Okay, well that that's very precious of you guys. And they have a good. Uh, it's probably the best uh, beer selection in Hood River, besides the breweries. But they pull a lot of stuff from. You know, the area, they had mm-hmm. some Washington beers, they had some California beers, they had some Oregon beers. Oregon. Definitely, like, um, not, I mean, when you visit a lot of small towns, and I know Hood River is a little bit of a, a destination in and of itself, and it's not far, it's kind of on the way to Bend, and, um, you know, but the yeah. the Mount beer Hood. selection there was... Uh, legitimately fine. Like, yeah. it wasn't bad at all. I mean, it's like, when you are comparing it to... Astoria, it's like 64 ounces doesn't have the selection that something like Bridge and Tunnel has. Right. They had more on tap, but they didn't definitely have the bottle selection and they didn't pull the random stuff that he does down at Bridge and Tunnel. Yeah, but that's what that guy does. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I would like, but it has a tap room that, or a brewery that's well like known, which is Freem, which would be like their version of uh, Fort George. Fort George. They have, you know, Ferment would be kind of like the, what's the one named? (laughs) uh, Bowie. Uh, yeah, I guess Bowie. I mean, a lot of money. Like, in a what's, cool the, what were you, what's the one? I was heard? thinking, um, oh shoot, the one up on the hill. No, no, no. The, the well, the one in, um, next to um, all the food trucks in Astoria. Oh, Reach Break. Yeah, Reach Break. Yeah. I kept wanting to say Point Break, which is I would have uh, gotten there if different. you had said Point Break. Where I got my haircut next door, but now that place is no longer a haircut place or a, b- a barber, but a cidery or a meadery or something. Yeah. But anyways, there's some a lot of good uh, choices in both towns. I know this was not supposed to be about a story, but <laughs> at all times, it, the story is such a cool place. It is very much so. Um, Anything you want el- else add about Hood River? Hood, I mean, it's a town of like three breweries, so there's not a lot to talk about. Yeah, I think. I mean, I don't think I have anything to really add to it, but I did enjoy uh, the time that we spent there. I thought it was it's totes adorable. It was adorable. It was very cute, and our hotel was very cute. Yeah, possibly haunted. And poss- I'm, I'm just going to say it's haunted. Well, I we, like to think that it's haunted. The really, really cool person at uh, 64 Ounces, well, she was like, oh, it's definitely haunted. It's like on the list of haunted places in the United States. Okay, yeah. I don't believe, so, in, like, I don't believe in ghosts. I'm cool with it. I don't, you know, whatever. But, like, 
it seems like it's probably haunted. It had one of those elevators that you had to open, like the little security door, the gate. Yeah, it's like 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 every old New York hotel that you imagine in the movies. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what the hotel or the elevator was. And the keys were actual keys. Yeah, not stupid cards. Yeah, um, yeah. I thought it was a really cool little hotel. <laughs> the TV was adorably tiny and i'm not saying that like i i could care less about the tv and i could stand there and watch it for hours but it was just like comically small it was so funny i mean the reference would be in the uh the dinner, the party. dinner party of the office uh-huh. where she throws the the dundee, the dundee at the tv at it. that's yeah. the tv that's the tv that was in there so and the, i got a kick out of that but the, that breakfast place underneath it's a i can't it's some german or a danish name but it's like a little danish uh, restaurant and I have their Ebel Skivers. Mm-hmm. Oh, so good. They're like little Danish pancakes. With like stuffed with jam. Yeah, right? stuffed in jam in there. And then I had lingonberry to dip it in. And she was like, Do you want syrup? I was like, No, I want these goddamn lingonberries, whatever the hell these things are. Mm-hmm. When did you guys buy these at IKEA? Did they? I don't know. I th- I'm sure they get that joke or whatever all the time. Probably. Well, anything else about Hood River you liked? I uh, I ate at a really just divey Mexican restaurant while you were taking a nap. Oh, I don't think really? I ever told you. No, I don't, this is new it, information. It was, to me. it was one of those places where I'm, I'm a big guy, um, where I couldn't get into the table because it was so close to the, like, it was like, do you have a booth? <laughs> or, and I'm like, something besides a booth? And she's like, no. And then I just was like, okay. And I just kind of squeezed in there and just ate my carne asada. Was it good? It was, it was good. It was definitely like, I had to go to like four places to find that were open though. I was like, I want divey Mexican food because we're in Oregon because that's the Mexico to Washington, what I've heard. Someone told me that once. Hood River? Yeah, because it's mm-hmm. south of Washington, and Washington's America. Okay. Anyway. Um, <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with that, but people get the reference. Uh, well, I mean, t- in defense of Hood River, though, it, it is a sleepy little town on like a Monday, Tuesday, or a Tuesday and Wednesday yeah, in the great. middle of the week after in that week between Christmas and New Year's where like, you know, not everybody is out and about. It's snowing. Like, you, dog, you are needy as fuck. I know. He is very needy right now, but he's so cute. So anyways, but like I would highly recommend Hood River. I, you know, if you're going to j- do it, s- go on the Washington side too, at least either on the way in or way out and make those stops at uh, Walking Man everybody and hi thank you for jumping on me also and then the other one what am I, oh backwoods any you know enjoy what the fine beer in that area can bring you yeah You're, she's cuddling the dog oh, i'm just getting him off this of is you. the most goddamn professional podcast <laughs> that's ever been out there this is why we produce like six episodes a year because we're just too busy petting a dog the other five months he gets really jealous when we're podcasting have you noticed he does we're not paying attention to him the cat doesn't give a shit. He's over there sleeping with his one tooth and one eye. He's alive, right? Shit. No, he is. Simcoe. Yeah, yeah he, he's he alive. He's alive. Cat's name is Simcoe. The coolest thing about him is his name. Also, the fact that he only has one eye. He only got the one eye. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, any news you anything about there? I, I do have one little bit of news. I don't think I have any news. Um... No, I don't think so. Shambles. It's coming back. <laughs> it's a pop of. up now, right? It's so uh, what what I've read is they're gonna on Wednesday or Tuesday, they're gonna announce the steak they have from the week. They're gonna sous vide it. Did I say that right? Mm-hmm. And then they're gonna sell that to go. So they're gonna sous vide it and then you have to take it take home. Take it home and finish it. So like reverse sear it, which okay. I think will be delightful. Uh then can you get a beer while you're waiting though? I don't know. That's a good question. I think you can. I think they're going to be stay open for that. Uh, but I think more or less the kitchen is going to be just to go only. I'm curious how they're going to do that sous vide thing, like because you have to get it like part of it is you have to get it to a certain temperature before we, you we sear throw it. that into one of our little fancy coolers to keep the temperature warm. Throw back a few cold ones. Yeah. Okay, back home. Reverse here. I mean, I'm sure they've got it mastered. I'm not like I'm. They're, wor- they're, I'm just they're, curious. They're going to have guidance. anything. They're, they're going to have some sort of guide about it. Yeah. I'm sure you. Can. We should try it. Do you convince me to like this is where we learned about the Denver cut is from the shambles mm-hmm. and I don't know what the hell a Denver cut is but we've had it multiple times from from there and from a butcher that's in Renton mm-hmm. oh I'm all about that Denver cut yeah no it's good it tastes like the Denver nuggets and the Rockies all combined into one it's so good is that a, it's a really good human joke yeah I think so or just love sports or just really cool that I know 
That might you know my dad I used to call the Denver Nuggets by the way mm, the yeah. Denver Butt Nuggets. That sounds about right. You know what? Fuck Dikembe Mutombo. When he beat the Sonics in the was at ninety five, when he's holding the ball over his head, I I hated that guy. And everybody who's a Seattle fan who's listening to this also hates him. All thirteen people who are listening to this, to this right podcast, now, yeah, hate that guy. They're like, yeah, I do. Like five of them. Yeah, that happens. But anyways, Denver cut meat, delicious. True. I think I'm out of news. Uh, no, I can't really think of anything else right now. I think you know we're in that uh, terrible January where everybody's doing dry January. So if you're, yeah, if you're not doing-, doing dry January, uh, make sure that you're supporting your local breweries and your local businesses because they do take a small hit this time of year. Um, you're so much nicer than me. I would tell you, if you're doing dry January, you can suck an ass. Okay. Well, I I like my approach better. Yeah, because you know what? These small businesses need your support, and you're like, no. Mm. I mean, I understand wanting to take a break or like wanting to step away. but Just like, slow down. Don't need to say no. Or maybe buy a gift card. Maybe do something to support these breweries. So we'll, well, bes- or suggest one. I to swear, you. I swear to God, I had this argument last time we did podcasts in like January. Probably, where I just threw a flip. These shitty. That's a word. Uh- <laughs> I'm just saying that, like, this is this does tend to be a little bit of a lull for small businesses. The holidays are percentage over. wise, they are down. Um, people are kind of you know people are drinking less, which is weather not shitty. Bad, January the, yeah, sucked notoriously in Seattle. The weather is shitty and like. Um, you know, people aren't out and as, out and about as much, you know, after the holidays and all the hubbub and stuff like that. This is why I bought a keg of lumber <clears throat> beard. But that's why I think it's important to make sure that you're supporting um your local businesses when when and if you can. So if you're not doing dry January or you're doing some sort of variation of semi semi dry January, um <clears throat> you know, go support your local businesses. I think I'm going to do semi erection January. Why'd you look down at me? Did you just... <laughs> you freaking perv. How dare you? I'm your wife. I'm your... My eyes are up here, young lady. Anyway, so... I'm not cutting that out either. No. People need to know that you're objectifying my body. And I'm sexy. Kind of wish you would. Oh, I spilled gravy on myself. I bet you did. Um. Do you anyway. Have a, do you have a beer of the week, month, year... Uh, I mean, I I already kind of said I think that my one of my highlights of beers of the year <gasps> was kind of that of was probably year. that Sabro Fresh Hop from Ravenna. Okay, that's really stood out to me. Like that's been one that I does that keep you awake at night? Just yeah. thinking about you. Like, do you think Tommy's gonna make it again? Tommy I hope so. Shit. Well, I hope Did Tommy Ravenna... has his brewer make it again because it was very very good. Ravenna's got new tanks. I think today or something. Yeah, I saw that on Instagram. I'll text him. Tell him congratulations on being rich now. Look at that big brewer money he's got. Oh, I also have sad news. I'm really bummed about Wingman. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We've I had know. a couple of breweries that have been on the podcast and then have died. Do not come on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, but we've had some breweries come on this podcast and this succeed, too. <laughs> Urban Family. Ravana. We never had Urban Family on this podcast. They're on this podcast. Oh, when they did the With collaboration. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Uh, never mind. Take that back. Sorry. Sorry, Urban Fam. How dare you? How dare you? You'd forgotten who this on here. We've had like seven episodes. You should know them all. Just joking. This is like episode like 60 something now. And like year five. <laughs> Killing it. Well, it's not year five. It's probably year four, three Killing and a half. It. I don't know. I got to <laughs> see how long I've been buying that doe name name from. All I get right. an update of how many times we get listens. Did you have a beer of the week or a beer? Oh, of the I'm going to do that scenic west from uh, Bow and Arrow, Arrow and Bow Brewing okay. down in uh, Albuquerque. It was, I'm like, it was delightful. Oh shit! I didn't hit record on this. <laughs> I'm just joking. I got you, fucker. Anyways, please follow me at the Mad Holt on Twitter. <laughs> Uh, follow me on um, Untapped and Twitter if you want to, even though I don't tweet very often at Samwise206. Follow her new food blog. <laughs> oh, <laughs> according to Sam blog. On Instagram. Uh, on Instagram. If you want to see what we've been eating recently. And you know what? She's been been knocking out of the park with meals. I have, but I'm really bad at the food photography part of it. I, I'm but gonna, I also, like, at one point, I'm like, I just want to eat this. I've been making this for, like, a half an hour. I'm going to work on that with you. I'm going to start taking videos where I'm going to make some uh, 
some reels type things and just get the get those Gen Z pe- folks that keep watching you. Oh, those reels are so fucking addictive. And you hate them, but you I know, them. but I can't stop watching them. You will complain about them nonstop. And then I come into the house or the room or whatever. And, and I'm just sitting there staring at my phone watching them. I hate myself. 2022. <laughs> First podcast of the year. <laughs> All right. Anyways, thank you for listening. Uh, please support your local brewery. Yes. Or, you know what? I'll say even that. P- support your local bottle shop. Support your local tap dive room. bar, tap room, winery, meadery, cidery, uh, strip tiny club. Tiny champagne bar in oh, Kirkland. Yeah, yeah. If you want to support my sister's champagne bar in Kirkland, do it. That's blood right there. Just tell her that um, tastes like homebrew sent you. You can say Matt, too, because that's, you know, me. Um, and, and and tell the person who owns it that she looks just like me also. Um, beard and everything. And she will uh, make you pay full price. <laughs> and possibly kick you out. <laughs> Anyways, I'm All out. All right. <laughs> I think that's it. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs>